So we can now talk about looking at a scenario where we have a given set of concentrations for a reaction. And the question that we could then answer is, doing the same kind of calculation we've talked about with determining what the equilibrium constant is, what the k value is, we could now talk about or answer the question, given a different set of concentrations, if we know what the k value is, are we there yet? Does the reaction need to proceed forward to get to equilibrium? Does it need to proceed in the reverse direction or to the left because we have more product than we would at equilibrium? So if some of the product's going to turn into reactant preferentially? Or are we already there? Are these concentrations, the concentrations, the ratio of concentrations that exist at equilibrium for this reaction under the specified conditions? Okay, so we're doing the same math. We're applying the law of mass action, the products raised to the value, the exponential value of their coefficients divided by the reactants raised to their exponential uh, value of their coefficients. We're doing the same math, the same calculation, plugging concentrations in the same place and getting an answer. And then we're taking that answer, and what we need to already have in our back pocket is what is the equilibrium value? What is the equilibrium quotient? Um, and if we know that, we can compare what we get, which we call Q, the reaction quotient, to the equilibrium constant, which is K. And so the results indicate what direction the reaction is going in. I choose to write the K first. Textbooks always write the Q first. And, and logically that makes sense because you calculate Q and then you go and compare it to K. The verbiage makes it sound like you take Q and then you, it's either greater than, less than, or equal to K. But I choose to write it the other way around because that then makes the sign of the greater than or less than point the arrow in the direction that the reaction needs to proceed. So it's a little visual trick that I do to help me keep it straight that hopefully helps you keep it straight as well. So after we do the math for the given values that are provided, and if we have the k value, we compare. And if k is greater than q, meaning that the value of the, the amount of product relative to the amount of reactant is greater than what there is in the situation we're looking at, then the reaction still needs to go forward. It still needs to go to the right to get to equilibrium. If K and Q turn out to be the same answer, well, guess what? We're already at equilibrium. There's no more forward or reverse direction. There's no more going to the right or more going to the left of this reaction. Uh, for all the reactants that are turning into product, proportionately the product is turning into reactants. It's at that dynamic equilibrium state. If, however, K is less than Q, then that means that uh, we have a state where there are, um, there's more product than there should be, or there's more product than there is at equilibrium, I should say, not there should be. So, if there's more product in the situation we're in than there is at equilibrium, that product, more of the product is going to turn into reactants than reactants into product. So the reaction is going to shift in a reverse direction from the way it's written or to the left. So we do the math and we figure out, well, where are we relative to K? Are we there yet? Have we reached equilibrium? Are we going towards equilibrium? Are we on the other side of equilibrium and have to go back to get it? Let's look at an example. So here's our nitrogen and hydrogen becoming ammonia example. And under a given set of conditions at 500 degrees Celsius, the K value is 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay? So if we have a scenario where in a reaction vessel we have uh, a certain amount of ammonia, 1.0 times 10 to the negative third molar, and in the same container, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molar of nitrogen gas, and 2.0 times 10 to the negative third molar of hydrogen gas. If that's our mixture, what's going on in terms of the reaction? Is it going forward, is it going backwards, or is it already where it's going to be in a dynamic balance? We plug the math in. Here's that law of mass action. 
just like we calculated to determine the concentrations, if we had them at equilibrium, what would the equilibrium value be? Well, now we're going to call it Q because we don't know if this is equilibrium or not. But we do know what the equilibrium value is. So we plug them in. There's writing the, the equilibrium expression, if you will. In this case, now it's a Q expression. Put the numbers in. Do the math. When I work this all through and do the math, the answer I get for this Q value is 1.3 times 10 to the 7th. That's ridiculously large and much larger than 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2. So what does that tell us? That tells us that, that the reaction needs to shift left to get to equilibrium. Ammonia is going to degrade into nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas in order to get to the equilibrium point. If the diff, uh, with different concentration values I had an answer that was the same, then we'd already be at equilibrium. If I had one that was much smaller than 6.0 times 10 to the negative 2, then the reaction would continue forward to make more ammonia. But in this particular situation, I have more ammonia than there should be at equilibrium or there will be at equilibrium. So to get to equilibrium, it's going to move to the left.